Redeeming your inheritance. Redeeming your inheritance. I believe it's important for all of us. We need to know how to redeem our inheritance. God has a great inheritance for you. Uh, and it's all uh, by Jesus Christ. And we want to, to talk about that tonight. And I would like to start uh, by saying we have two kinds of inheritance. One is an inheritance, uh, natural inheritance, and that might include material uh, riches. But, if, but even if it does not involve material riches, it involves many, many other things. And, and we're going to talk about that. And we also have a spiritual inheritance. And many times we just want to think about our spiritual inheritance that through Jesus Christ, we are an heir with him and a joint heir. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so sometimes we just focus on the inheritance that we have with Jesus Christ. But see, God has always had good plans for you. And uh, the way that he formed you, even before uh, you were in your mother's womb, he had good plans for you. And we have to think about our bloodline. There are certain things in the bloodline that we need to recognize there. And there are uh, inheritances that we're supposed to receive from our uh, bloodline. And many of those uh, things have been uh, blocked. And so we're going to talk about tonight about how to redeem our inheritance. And I, I want to give you just a personal example. Uh, and, and I want to start with this is my great uh, grandfather. I didn't. Uh, I just wanted to just give you just a, a quick uh, look at it, and I didn't want to take time to put it up uh, uh, digitally. And so this is my great grandfather uh, William and my great grandmother Rebecca. Now he was a rancher. And he had a big ranch, and he had a lot of of children, and I'm sure he had expectations of uh, having a, a great ranch and a lot of cattle and a lot of horses. Uh, but the thing about William is he died at an early age. Now, he had several children, but his children were young. And so I want to give you a, a, a photograph of them uh, when they're older. And uh, just, you don't have to see the details of it, but just basically, mm -hmm. here's his wife, Rebecca. She's uh, much older now. She's probably in her uh, 90s, 80s or 90s. And uh, that's all of her sons. And uh, she's, she's in the middle. Uh, so she said, that's Rebecca again. She's sitting in the, uh, in the chair. And then there are all of my, my granddad and my uncles around them. They're all cowboys. Uh, <laughs> and, and so we're from Texas. And, and all of my... Uh, relatives were from Texas and just go back to this one particular branch of my my family I just wanted to, you to see that that I had uh, uh, some inheritance that, that came through that particular uh, line of my uh, grandparents great grandparent but you see also my great granddad died at an early age uh, his youngest child was just a uh, just crawling on the on the floor when he uh, passed away. So he didn't see many of those things. And we don't know exactly why he passed away. It may have just been a demonic attack against him, or it might have uh, been some iniquity or uh, that uh, had come upon him. And so we're going to look at these kinds of issues. But what I want you to see is that I'm sure he had uh, expectations and desires to leave a big inheritance, but it but it didn't happen because of his early death. And uh, I, I want us to realize that there are things in your bloodline that that God's not going to come down here and change who you are. He He uh, created you uh, to be a certain way. And uh, I found out early when Sherry and I married, uh, I couldn't change her, and she found out she couldn't change me because we had. Uh, bloodlines in us that Amen. caused us to be uh, certain ways. And now, of course, when we accepted Jesus Christ, it, it changed us on the inside and it began to work on the outside. But but what I want to start with is a, a verse in uh, Leviticus 
1711, I'm going to ask Sherry to read that out, out of Leviticus. And it, it talks about the life is in the blood. Now, so this is that's my bloodline. You saw part of my bloodline there. Read this verse here. Okay. Well, also, I'd like to welcome Lucy and Sophia and Mary with us tonight. Uh, thank you all for being here. Leviticus 17, 11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood by reason of the life that makes atonement. Okay, so what I want to look at here then is that uh, this word life, there are so much more to it. There's so much more to it than just life, to that word that says in the blood there is life. But read all of these things here, okay. if you would, please. Let's see what is in the blood. The soul, the self, life, preacher, person, appetite, mind, living being, desire, emotion, and passion. Okay, so when you receive blood from your ancestors, and we'll just talk about, let's say, four generations back, uh, and you received, a, you have a bloodline. Um, your parents and grandparents and great grandparents and great great grandparents. Okay, so you have <clears throat> you have that bloodline, and that bloodline has so many things embedded in it. Uh, it has passions and appetites and desires, and uh, those could be either good or bad. And, and you receive all of those things, and uh, for. And we're going to look at that when there are some things in there that God intended for you, but that maybe you didn't get God's intention. What can we do about it in the bloodline? And so I want us to think about what a righteous person uh, does. Uh, a righteous person is going to leave an inheritance. And so I'm going to ask Sherry to read out of Psalm 112. Verses 1 through 3. Praise the Lord. Blessed is a person who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. His descendants, listen to this, will be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. So this is a righteous person who fears the Lord. Uh, and we've talked about earlier uh, that we learn how to fear the Lord, but it, it leaves an inheritance, his descendants. And, and whether we're talking about a male or female, it, it includes both of them, of course. But the descendants of this righteous person who fears the Lord, uh, they're going to be mighty on the earth. And so there is going to be an inheritance that they receive. And it's not just material things that we're talking about today. It's about personality. It's a it's about uh, intellect. It's about uh, creative abilities, uh, mm -hmm. attitudes, desires, all of those things. You receive those things, and God is not going to change who you are. And even your spouse cannot change mm -hmm. who you are because you've got all of that. But it can be redeemed. And so that, that, that's the good news. Now, we're going to be looking at a particular topic tonight, and that is about tithing and offerings. Uh, not that I'm encouraging you to tithe, or, but I'm just going to look at consequences of tithing uh, and offerings. Uh, and so what are the consequences? And so we're going to look first at the positive consequence of a person who tithed, and that was Abraham. And we saw it, of course, in Genesis uh, when he had uh, gone out and fought some enemies, and he came back and he gave uh, a tithe of, what, mm -hmm. of his spoil to the high priest. And uh, but what's really interesting, it was so important that the book of Hebrews uh, refers to it. And I've got a verse here in Hebrews I wanted Jerry to talk to read to you because we're going to see that it impacts your family through many generations. Uh, whether or not you tithe and give offerings to the Lord, or in other words, are you are you serving the Lord? So we could look at a lot of different things, but we're just going to use uh, this one 
area, we'll talk about it as an application of talking about inheritance and how our actions can impact uh, not only our own life, but also our children and grandchildren mm -hmm. and great grandchildren. Mm -hmm. and, and so yeah. we're, what we're doing now, we're starting with the positive side, looking at that and how that carries down. And so what we're talking about tonight, the title is Redeeming Your Family Inheritance. Hallelujah. See, uh, we've all uh, are in line for a family inheritance, but uh, the devil wants to come and take that away and, uh, and bring up obstacles and, and uh, to keep you from getting your inheritance. But God has plans for you to get your family inheritance, not only for you, but also for your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren. And so that's the essence of what we're talking about tonight. And we're going to use an, a positive example here about how Abraham uh, uh, helped release a blessing and an inheritance into his not only children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren. So read this verse here. Okay. <clears throat> Hebrews 7, verses 9 and 10. Through Abraham, even, e even Levi, who received tithes, has paid tithes. For he was still in the loins of his forefather when Melchizedek met him. Okay. So, Hallelujah. So Abraham, see, was the one that gave uh, a tithe to the high priest. Melchizedek. And, and uh, so it blessed, see, his son is not Levi. Abraham's son was Isaac, and then Isaac's son was Jacob, and then Jacob's son was Levi. And then if you really look at this passage, it's talking about not just Levi, but the tribe of Levi, mm -hmm. how obeying God, being a righteous person, and doing what God tells you to do will impact your children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, generation after generation. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to turn the table and we're going to look at it from the negative side. What happens if people don't do what they're supposed to, if they transgress against the sin, against the law of God? Uh, there are also consequences. We saw here there are consequences by following God and doing uh, what he said. But now I want you to think about there are consequences about what we do individually, and that's going to impact our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. And, and so let's think about, first of all, there are sins. And the mm -hmm. sin, that would be talking about my own transgression against God, uh, against his laws and against his ways. Uh, and, but it still has consequences, and that's what we see in Romans 6. Uh, verse 23, read that. Verse. For the wages of sin is death, but the gracious gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, Amen. so that sin, then that's our transgression against God's law, and it has consequences. Uh, but then there are our ancestors have also, they created, they, uh, they committed sin. But what it talks about a lot of times in the King James Version, particularly it talks about iniquities. And, and so what we see are the iniquities of our forefathers, and that impacts us. And so I want Sherry to read this verse. Um, Exodus 20, verse 5. I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Okay, so we're going to use these two terms, sins, and that's going to block the inheritance. That's our own transgression against God. The iniquities are our ancestors' uh, iniquities. That was their transgression uh, against God, but it has a different kind of consequence because it comes down through the bloodline. And every time a person commits a sin, there's some kind of a spiritual uh, uh, deformity that happens in them. But now if, they, if they're committing iniquities, those iniquities flow down from generation to generation to generation, mm -hmm. and it sets in motion what's called curses. 
and, and curses and, and doctors know about curses mm -hmm. because if they you go into a doctor's office, he's going to ask, well, have you had relatives with heart attacks, with oh, heart disease? Or we, diabetes. Uh, or... Have you had, uh, so he's going to be looking at these things, but these are all curses. Uh, if if uh, early death starts happening in your family, generation after generation, that's a curse. A heart disease, generation after generation after generation. Uh, diabetes. Uh, that's a heart disease. Diabetes, if generation, if, those are curses. Now, where did they come from? They came from the iniquities of our fathers. And, and so rather than receiving uh, an abundant inheritance, we're receiving curses. <clears throat> and we're all uh, subject to these uh, mm -hmm. curses in our bloodlines. <clears throat> and so we have to, do we have to cleanse our bloodlines? And, and of course, it's all by the blood of Jesus. So what yeah, activates yeah. what activates the inheritance is going to be the blood of Jesus. And that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Uh, but what it's going to do, see, it's going to give us, his blood gives us uh, a spiritual inheritance. Um, and But there, we already have the natural inheritance of in our bloodlines and so if our forefathers and all of our forefathers have, in fact, sinned, because there's only one person that didn't sin, and that was Jesus Christ. So we know that everybody else sins. And so all of your forefathers have, when they have created these iniquities, which are transgressions against God's law, there's some kind of a deformity then in your bloodline that's coming down to you, and we have to deal with it. We have to deal with that iniquity because it's creating, setting in motion a curse, and the curse may be a poverty. And so if you have a curse of poverty on you, it might be coming from an iniquity of your forefathers. Mm -hmm. and, and so let's look at Malachi. Let me still okay, sure you have something to say. Yeah, before we go to Malachi. Let me say this, that Brother Fred and I, we take these messages very seriously, and we begin to apply them to our own lives as soon as the Holy Spirit gives it to us. And so we have been uh, asking the Lord to show us uh, if what the iniquity of our forefathers were, and I know that we've covered this some before, but especially where tithing and lack and poverty uh, are concerned. And so we have gone before the Lord and we have broken off um, and asked for forgiveness of any of our ancestors who did not tithe. Okay. And it only takes one. It only takes one in your ancestry that were not tithers. And that brings that curse uh, down upon upon you and upon us and so we have broken off uh some of those um cl uh, curses especially the one uh about tithing and giving of offerings okay so, so we're looking at tithing and offerings and this is just an example of what i'm talking about tonight but it could come in a lot of different ways but this is real obvious uh, because it shows up in our finances so I'm going to ask you to read from Malachi chapter three, three verses eight and nine. Would anyone rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how have I robbed you in tithes and offerings? You are cursed with a curse for you are robbing me, the entire nation of you. Okay. So here we are. We see uh, that if somebody doesn't pay tithes, it creates a curse, and, and that goes down from generation to generation to generation, and the particular curse from not tithing and giving offerings is poverty, and you might say, well, I personally tithe, but I still have lack, and I don't have the abundance that Jesus Christ uh, promised me, and so why, why is it that a person could tithe and still be in lack or even poverty. 
it's because they haven't dealt with the iniquities of their forefathers. Now, you look at me, for example, I had two parents, four grandparents, uh, eight great grandparents, and 16 great great grandparents. That's a total of 30 people. And did all of those people tithe and give offerings? No, no, they didn't. And, and did a majority of them? I, I probably not. I knew most, of, I knew many of them, not, not most at all, but I knew many of them. And they didn't die. And so that created uh, a curse on my life. It brought down poverty. And I showed you to begin with, and for those people who came, uh, weren't here right at the beginning, I showed a picture of uh, my great grandmother, Rebecca, and my great granddad, uh, William. And William, uh, owned a big ranch and he had a bunch of children and, and he had aspirations of having a great wealth and a lot of cattle and a lot of horses, but he died at an early age. And so his desires never materialized. He never had the inheritance to give to his children and grandchildren and great grandchildren that he had desired. And so there were some poverty, there was poverty in uh, in some of the of his children and those bloodlines, there were there was poverty in there, and I'm just using this as an example. And it it doesn't take everybody uh, not to tithe. It just takes one or two people who are not tithing, and you have thirty people in your first four generations, and one of those people not tithing would create a curse on you and cause you to be in poverty and not have the abundance that God has for you. Jesus Christ gave you a great inheritance, mm -hmm. but a lot of people are not tapping into his inheritance. And so that's what we're talking about tonight. How can we regain what has been lost to our families that God originally created, originally intended for us. And that's for you too. How can we do that? And that's what this message is about, is to show you the problems, where the problems are. And we're focusing on the one, one application is in the area of tithes and offerings, but it is in all other areas as well. And I'm just picking this one because it's easy and it shows up in poverty and lack and not having the abundance that we would like to have and that God wants for us. And so we're going to have to deal with that. Uh, so if any of those 30 people in your uh, first four generations over you didn't tithe, then you might be subject to that uh, poverty and, and the lack. And, and even regardless of how hard you work, you can't overcome it because it's something that has to be overcome spiritually by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> See, when we look at Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verse 7, I'm going to ask Sherry to read that. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our wrongdoings according to the riches of his grace. Okay, so there are in our lives, both sins and iniquities, but from Hebrews chapter 10, we find out that God deals with both of them through Jesus Christ, both sins and iniquities. So in your bloodline, you can bring the blood of Jesus uh, to bloodline and cleanse it and cleanse it. And I want to give you this example. When Daniel found in the word of God, that uh, the exiles from Israel that were in Babylon uh, were gone. The 70 years they had been in Babylon uh, was fulfilled. Uh, you think, well, okay, so Israel is going to go back. The people of Israel, they're going to go back to the homeland because 70 years is up. And that's what Jeremiah said. It's going to be 70 years. They're going to be in exile, 70 years, and then God's going to restore them. Now, Daniel, we could easily have said, well, he, he had a big, uh, party and fiesta because all of the uh, people
to pray and intercede and confess the sins of his forefathers and those people in Israel. He wasn't even talking about his sins. Okay, so if you want to clean up your bloodline so that you can have the abundant life that Jesus came to give you, you need to begin to confess the sins of your fathers, uh, of those generations, those uh, uh, those people in your four generations. And you might say, well, I don't know all of their sins. Well, you may know some, and I'd say start there. If you know some things, uh, for example, I showed you a picture of my great uncle. So one of those uh, wound up in prison for murder. Well, that's something I could confess a sin and ask God to forgive me. And I know from Hebrews 10 that he will uh, deal with my sins and the iniquities of my forefathers. And that's important, but we have to confess, confess those sins. Now, when you confess sins, what does, what happens? We know from 1 John chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 7, that he forgives us our sin. He's faithful. He forgives us our sin and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So what you want, you want your bloodline clean from all iniquities, because if there are iniquities of your forefathers in your bloodline, it's going to bring a curse on you and on your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren. So how do we get rid of it? We activate the blood of Jesus, redeem the, uh, that's where the redemption is. And what I'm talking about tonight is redeeming your family inheritance. What was in, what God created, put in your bloodline for you to have as an inheritance that you didn't get because of the iniquities of your forefathers. So this is an important message. Now, the way that I have dealt with it myself is for months, <clears throat> I would go out in the woods and I would pray and I would seek the Lord and just let him show me the things that I needed to confess. That he's faithful. Yeah, once you find out, and, and there were certain mm -hmm. sins mm -hmm. that when I was a little boy, I knew certain activities happened, but I didn't know they were sin, but, but I could go back and, and then the Holy Spirit would show me that they were sins. And then there were other facts that I knew about, uh, and the Holy Spirit would show me the, the, the sins associated with them. And so I did this over a period of months. This is not just a one-time deal. I wanted my bloodline clean. And then one day the Lord said it was clean. Uh, and, and that's a great, that is a great satisfaction uh, to know that I have spent the time to get the redemption in my bloodline so that my children and my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren can be blessed and have the full blessing, full inheritance that God intended for them. Amen. So it's not just about you and me. It's about our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren. Hallelujah. This is an important, important message. I'd like to just, uh, okay. uh, just uh, place in here, uh, uh, the Lord showed me uh, concerning uh, the ans my ancestors and, and thyroid uh, disease. And, and when I began to think about how many of my, my ancestors had something happened in, in their thyroid, and see, that is what they diagnosed me with, uh, what was it, 1992, 1992 was the second highest malignant thyroid cancer. And so, uh, you know, and, and the Lord healed me and gave me a miracle. And I'm so thankful uh, to him for that. And, and I'm here tonight to, to proclaim his, his glory and, and give him praise. But I will say this, that when we begin to uh, speak about and study about uh, this message tonight. Uh, I realized that uh, I have some other relatives, and I have a daughter, um, Amy Elizabeth, and and so I broke off the thyroid, uh, any uh, type of thyroid disease off of her, and uh, and so the Lord will show you. 
what to pray for and what to ask for forgiveness uh, so that so that we can have that inheritance that that Jesus has for us. See, you might be reading the Bible and uh, it might be talking about greed. And so you'd say, oh, Lord, forgive my ancestors for greed, greed. for being greedy, uh, for wanting more and more uh, material possessions. Forget. See, that's a way that you can begin to cleanse your bloodline. When you begin to see things in the scriptures and they become real to you, and not only might it affect you, but it might affect your uh, ancestors, including your parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents, then just begin to confess those things off. And so you don't need to know exactly which uh, ancestor did something. Mm -hmm. When you begin to see it in the scriptures or you begin, you're seeking the Lord, you want a clean bloodline. This is not mm -hmm. just about you, but this is about your family Amen. to regain the inheritance that you should have had. <clears throat> but the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus came to give you abundance, abund abundant life, and life more abundantly. And if you're not living in abundant life, then there's something that's uh, that's stopping that's hindering your inheritance and, and uh, let's look at romans uh there i've got romans, verse there. romans 8 17 <laughs> and if children heirs also heirs of god and fellow heirs with christ if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him so if you are co-heir with Jesus Christ, then you ought to be living an abundant life. And if you see anything in your life other than abundance, ask the Lord about it. Is this a sin that I have uh, committed that's caused this? Or is this something that one of my ancestors, mm -hmm. uh, an iniquity from them, and, I, and has come down uh, to haunt me to as a curse uh, and to cause me to have this problem in my body, this problem in my mind, this problem with my marriage, this problem with my relationships, mm -hmm. this problem with my children, find out the root cause of it. I find out by praying. <clears throat> so this message, see, has addressed two different aspects of your inheritance. You have an, a spiritual inheritance and you have a natural inheritance, and both of them are activated by the blood of Jesus. Amen. And Amen. if there is any lack in any area, whether it's it's uh, in your body or in relationships or in uh, finances. finances or in job or any area of lack, ask the Lord, what do I need to do to... Uh, clean my bloodline in this area so that this is not coming from a curse or uh, in my own sin uh, that I can uh, confess my sins and be cleansed from uh, for my sins to be forgiven and my unrighteousness forgiven. So there are issues. Now, it, it may not always be from uh, your sin or the sins of your parents uh, or grandparents or uh, other ancestors. It might be an attack from one of your enemies. You have three enemies. You have the world, the uh, devil, and the flesh. And all of those want to attack you and, and take away your inheritance. But, but what we're dealing with tonight is that there are some systematic problems that we all need to deal with. We need to clean up our bloodlines and it's not just for us, but it's also for our family. So the title of the message tonight is a redeeming your family inheritance. Amen. It's Amen. a it's a, something that you can put into action and, and just be seeking the Lord about how mm -hmm. can I get my inheritance? Jesus died on the cross. He shed his blood for you to have an abundant life. And if you're not living that abundant life, maybe you're under a lot of stress 
or, or maybe you're under a lot of stress with the work or with the family or uh, things are not going the way you want them to go. Go back to the Bible. Look at the word of God. Find out where sins uh, are affecting you, where the iniquities of your ancestors are affecting you mm -hmm. and clean up your bloodlines. And not only will you be able to live in abundance, but your family, your children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren will be living in abundance as well. And I think we all want that. Amen. We want to redeem our family inheritance. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'll say thank Amen. you for coming. And uh, we're just so thrilled uh, that you're here. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, one thing, uh, I have uh, calls and, and meetings that I, I go and I minister to, to uh, different groups. And, and I have women who come up and want prayer uh, for, they want to have a child. And they haven't been able to conceive uh, and bring forth a child. And so I was asking the Lord about that this, this week. And, um, and one thing he showed me was that if there is any uh, abortions uh, that have happened in the bloodline, in the ancestry uh, bloodline, that that is a spirit of death. And that will come upon um, the family, the children, the grandchildren. And, and he said, you need to... Uh, bring that before the person before you pray for them and get that completely cleared up and, and under, the blood, under the blood of Jesus. And then uh, that conception uh, will occur. And, and so, you know, this was something that was, uh, gave me, uh, you know, God's people perish for lack of knowledge. And so I want to, to be knowledgeable and as you pray for people, uh, you also need to hear from the spirit of the Lord uh, exactly how to help that person and how to pray for them and, and bring deliverance to them, uh, also to bring their inheritance to them. And like Brother Fred said, I feel like the people of God are, we're supposed to be the the most abundant living people on the face of the earth. And, and why is that? It's because uh, we have uh, a good father. Uh, we have Jesus Christ, our savior and our Lord. And, and then we have the Holy Spirit, the power of God. And so we should be living that abundant life that Jesus uh, talks about in John chapter 10.